Oh, hello, hello, everyone, and welcome to the last video in our series about the goal of strong, sustainable economic growth. Today, we're going to be talking about recent aggregate supply side factors that have affected us achieving the goal of strong, sustainable economic growth. So this is just following on from when we talked about aggregate demand side factors in the last video. Um, this one's a bit briefer. It's a lot more straight to the point. So let's just get straight to it. So first up, one of the things we're going to look at are changes in productivity in apparently the tiniest text ever. Um, so with changes in productivity, we look at labor productivity or GDP per hour worked most often, which is the um, annual volume of all goods and services produced divided by the total number of hours worked by all employees per year. Basically, this gives us a dollar value on how much each employee is producing per hour. And so productivity growth comes from a few different areas. It comes from using new technology, um, high levels of business investment in new equipment and technology and government aggregate supply side policies such as tariff cuts, labor market reforms and skilled migration it helps us get more output per, per hour worked. Um, with this as well, there's been a lot of different things the government's implemented that's going to come up in Unit 4, depending on what VCAR changes, where from the aggregate supply side policy point of view, the government's done a lot because our productivity growth has kind of stagnated a little bit over time. And so we want to keep being more productive. We want businesses to do things that will be more productive because that makes us more competitive and makes us more able to produce more overall. So there are things like if a business conducts research and development, which will hopefully, if successful, make them more productive, they get a 45% discount on their tax, which is pretty amazing. Um, there are other research and development grants. They There's the what's now the $150,000 instant asset write-off scheme, um, which means that businesses can buy $150,000 of new assets and write them off and get them back on tax, which means they can produce a lot more without having a big financial outlay. Um, so productivity has been increasing each year, but at a slower rate than previously experienced. During the 90s, we had a massive productivity increase because of basically the advent of the internet becoming popular and widespread use. And since then, like we've kind of stagnated a little bit, like technology now just incrementally improves things. At the same time, if you look at workers, we're a lot more distracted at the same time. So changing in productivity, if we favorably increase our productivity, we will have greater aggregate supply, which helps with our economic growth. Other ways they can improve productivity is through education and training and getting more skilled labor. So other things, changes to interest rates. So um, the, all the decreases to record low levels for our interest rates helps businesses cut their costs, lift their profits, and grow investment in new technology and equipment and increase our productive capacity overall. So the general idea we're cutting um, interest rates for businesses is that we're hoping that they'll use that to invest and expand, buy that new equipment, um, invest in a new factory, increase their production, um, and they'll also have less expenses because they won't have to pay as much on their business loans. So lower interest rates helps increase our overall level of economic growth. Well, it's supposed to, the conditions at the moment aren't really favoring um, low interest rates leading to higher rates of economic growth, but that's the general idea of them. So businesses are more able to invest and expand at the moment because of the really low interest rates. Um, on the opposite side, it means that other businesses from overseas are less likely to invest in Australia. Um, then we've got changes in climatic conditions affecting production. So we've had massive droughts, we've had bushfires, and these have caused massive issues in terms of our overall um, impacts on our production costs. Um, so if you look at, like one of my favorite places in Victoria is Bright, um, which is up near the snow, et cetera, um, in that just beautiful area of Victoria. Um, and because of the bushfires, their tourism has just been absolutely crushed. And now with the COVID-19 pandemic, tourism there has just completely disappeared. Other things like, that these recent bushfires are expecting that they've created over a hundred million dollars in agricultural damage and were predicted to create over 220 million dollars of um, damage by 2020. I think it's actually ended up being more than that if you look up the most recent figures. So that's pretty serious and this damages our natural resources so we can't produce as much but also limits us in terms of that tourism and all those other things that we do really well with. 
Then lastly, we've got changes in the exchange rate. So a weaker Australian dollar has made our exports more competitive over other economies, which is really good for aggregate supply, means we can export more. But this also means form, um, firms who are using imports as factors of production, which is a lot of Australia. Um, I think I've made the point before that if you look at almost anything produced in Australia, it will say made from local and imported ingredients. Like even if we look at my delicious coffee that I have here, the beans are from like Honduras or something. So that's an import. And so if the dollar is weaker, it costs more for me to get these beans from my delicious coffee. And therefore, if cafes are using those, that's an increase in their cost of production and therefore makes them less competitive overall. They might have to increase their prices because of it. They're less likely to continue producing as much. Then very, very lastly, some possible future influences on our economic growth. So we've got labor and skill shortages due to our aging population. Um, it's part of the reason why we need to have more skilled migration, which is impossible at the moment because we don't have open borders, but um, we have limits in terms of the skills that we have in Australia, the skills available from our unemployed workers don't match up with the jobs available. So often we are getting workers from overseas to fulfill these roles. Um, we also have climate change's effect on our resources, which we just talked about, that's gonna to continue to happen. There's gonna be more bushfires, there's gonna be more major weather events, all those kind of things. The depletion of global oil resources and other resources, so the predicted life of some mineral resources are only 10 to 40 years. Um, global uncertainties or shocks, so our sudden diseases and wars that might break out. There is currently issues worrying about with Korea, with Kim Jong-un and his health and people potentially wanting to take advantage of his health maybe not being as good. Um, there's a lot of backlash against China at the moment and some back and forth between China and other countries that could cause future issues and sudden diseases being quite obvious. Like This virus has done the world quite um, a big big concern. Other than that, we've got technological advances. The more they come in, the more productive we can be, the more we can grow, the more we can produce and increase our overall level of economic growth and help us hit that three to 3.5% 3 sustainable growth each year. Well, that's it for this video, which is the last video in the series of strong and sustainable economic growth. I hope these have been very helpful to you. Um, if you have any questions at all, as always, feel free to send me an email, write me a message, um, send me a chat on Teams. Um, I just want you to do as good as you possibly can. Um, keep an eye out, VCAR is putting out updated information about um, the study design, hopefully today, which is the 1st of May, but who knows with how long it's taken VCAR to um, put out new information about things and we're all kind of flying a little bit blind. But um, thank you for watching these videos as always, and I hope you have an excellent day. Thank you very much. Goodbye.